If we want to calculate the gradient of, say, a linear straight line function, it's fairly easy to do. Because the gradient is constant all the way through, we just have to pick any two points and use our rise over run formula to calculate what that slope is going to be, what the gradient will be. Sometimes though we're not fortunate enough to have a linear function and we may be asked to calculate the gradient of say a quadratic. In this case here we'll just use a simple y equals x squared. Now the issue with this function is the fact that it's changing all the way around so the gradient keeps changing. And I'm going to talk about the gradient as the rate of change. What that actually means is, the rate of change, is how fast our function is changing over time. And we can actually refer to this. We can say m our gradient is equal to the change in y with respect to the change in x. And we actually recognize this. This is just our formula, rise over run, or y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Our problem with this type of function though, any nonlinear function, is that the gradient is different at every single point. So if we look here for example, our gradient is fairly steep and it's negative. Here our gradient is still negative but it's less steep. Here at the turning point our gradient is zero. And now our gradient here is increasing and getting more and more positive as we go along. So we have another challenge that we've got to try to overcome if we're going to figure out what the gradient at that point is. One of these methods is that we can get a, an approximate idea of the gradient by calculating what's called the average rate of change. But to do this we need to pick a couple of different points on the graph. So let's say for example I want to get the gradient at x equals 1. I might try here, rather than just calculating that, I'm going to actually calculate the average rate of change between x equals 1 and x equals 3. And really, all this is, this is not as complicated as it seems, all it is, is we are going to force this to become a linear function by drawing a straight line between those two points and calculating what the rate of change is there. And we'll put in our y values at that point. So using this method I'm going to say that the gradient across the interval 1 to 3 is going to equal y2 minus y1 so that's 9 minus 1 over x2 minus x1, 3 minus 1 and that's just going to give us a gradient of 4. So what that's saying is across the interval 1 to 3 when x goes from 1 to 3 on average, the gradient or the rate of change is going to be 4. In reality, it's only actually going to equal 4 at one tiny, tiny, tiny little point. But on average, it's going to be this. Now, it's important to understand this idea of average rate of change because in the next video, we're going to get into instantaneous rate of change, which is a way that we can estimate what the gradient is at precisely the location x equals 1.